Neil Jason, welcome to the JSR Thank you Festival so much. Lounge. You're here the second time, and you came with Randy Brackett for the first time, and uh, your bass player basically that played all his life. You know, mm -hmm. obviously you did a, an education at Queens College, and then you were in the University of Randy Brecker and many others to learn actually on the bandstand. How did this shape your life? Um, there's only so much you could learn in a classroom. Standing next to other players, especially standing next to the best, Michael and Randy Brecker, Steve Gadd on drums, Steve Jordan on drums, you learn what a groove is and basically you learn what not to do so that everything has meaning to it and the notes start to take on much more importance than the amount of notes you could play. You start to see how other guys treat the music. You learn how to form a song on the bandstand. You can't really do that in the classroom. You get one of the best bandstand experiences I had was way, way back when I was very young. John Tropez, the guitarist, had a band. He used to play at McKell's, which was a club in the city. And all the greatest in New York would come and sit in. And Will Lee sat in with me one night. And we ended up playing for a few weeks, two basses, two drums, two keyboards. One of the best learning experiences I ever had, standing next to one of the greats, seeing what he did, seeing what Steve Gadd did, seeing what, and that's, that was the deepest education besides Brecker University, which of course was the great learning curve. Yeah, and that's really where it's supposed to be, I guess, you know, so let me ask you this. You, I mean, you're obviously a professional musician and you made your living with playing, what is bandstand learning, which is kind of what this project is, learning on the bandstand for mm -hmm. young kids, for you, and how do you think this should be a stronger part of a learning path for the young musician, and why? Um, again, the things I learned in school only prepared me for something like this, where you get to sit next to somebody who actually has done it before so you could experience a chart or a song through their eyes. And it teaches you things that you can't write on a blackboard. And you see what they put in the song, what they leave out of the song. And it, when I went to college, they had, all they had was orchestra and band. They didn't have a jazz class. They didn't have a soul class. They didn't have a... These things, when they finally formed the jazz ensemble, my God, this is 45 years ago, um, the experience of even just playing with my contemporaries at that time was, uh, it, it elevated me to the point where I was now able to take the learning process from the school mm -hmm. and see how it worked in the real world. Yeah. Because the real world is you have to play a certain way and you have to have a certain respect for the music in order to make money. It, Great, let me just take that. Yeah. Does making money change the attitude? Versus, you know, when you were at Queen's College you had ensembles. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't think it did because in the beginning, I don't think I ever thought about that. Okay. To me, the importance and the thrill was I was going to get to stand next to Randy and Michael Brecker. Yeah. And Terry Bozio was going to be on drums or Chris Parker or Steve Jordan or Steve Gatt. That was the most important thing to me was what can they teach me and what can I learn from that? And how can I take all of this knowledge that I got in school, theory, practice, scales, and, and now make it a reality so that I would be able to gel with other guys on the bandstand yeah. and sound like a coherent rhythm section, which now gave you a chance to make a living because 
since you now know how to work with other people, you get called yeah. to go and play. I don't think money had really anything to do with it until it was on such a professional level where you had to learn to negotiate your contracts yeah. and learn to understand, which now in college, they even start to teach that. Yeah. Yeah. Because you could be the greatest musician, but if you go out and you don't know some of the business world, you could possibly not make a living yeah. and be a fantastic player. So it's very important to get that balance. But I see it also, it's an ethical thing. You actually went for the music first before the money. And nowadays I see young kids say, hey, maybe I should, you know. I totally agree. And, the rea and again, you're right. The reality is if you pay attention to the music and you love the music, yeah then the music will provide for you. If it, and if you come from that side of the world where, well, the only reason I want to do this is because I want to make money, yeah. as opposed to I want to make music, yeah. uh, it's kind of going about it backwards. Yeah. And you make money because you've developed your art. Yeah. You don't develop your art because you're making money. Exactly. Hey, thank you so much for sharing your... Absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you for having me again this year. Love Beautiful. being here with the kids. Great. Thank you. My pleasure.